There we go. Okay, we're recording to the cloud. Let me see. Where's the button to push for the live stream? Over to the right of reactions where the three uh, little dots are. Yeah. It should say more and um, in there, in that box. I have, well, because I'm on my phone, so I have chat, meeting settings, minimize, virtual background. She might not have set it up unless, if she didn't set it up before the meeting, it might not be set up. Okay. Okay. But I can edit the recording and load it later. All right. All right. I'm going to let go. Awesome. Wow, we've got lots of girls here already. Hello, ladies. How are you? Hi, Helena. So a few girls want to go ahead. Right now, we've got a few minutes before our class starts where you can test your microphone and you can test your cameras to see what's working for you. Because if you need any help today, if you can use your camera to show me your uh, workstation, your work area, then then I can offer some help for things. So while we're waiting for everybody to sign in, I see some of you have your first and last names listed on um, your sign in, just like my name says Mary Higgins. So what you need to do is press those three little dots up in the right hand corner of your screen of your little window and hit rename. And I'm going to go ahead and rename myself. You want to put on uh, the letter for whatever level you are, B for brownies or C for cadets or A for ambassadors. Go ahead and put in our council letters for me since I'm an adult leader and employee here at Girl Scouts of Central California South. And then I'm also going to put in my camp name. So go ahead, if you don't know how to change your um, your name, just uh, raise your hand and ask and we can help you do that. Let's see here. So, got that story. I think that's right. I'm make sure it shows an example. See the front. Um, yeah, I'm starting a class right now with girls across the country, honey. So I'll be online for the next hour and a half. I have to tell my family I'll be an hour and a half because sometimes I run these classes a little bit long because I just have too much fun with all you girls. So... The little street taco tortillas were behind the the hot the pan. Did you find them this morning?
Still have some more girls joining us. So, girls, if you're just arriving, go ahead and change your name so that we have your level and then your name instead of your first and last name. So, we can keep your privacy and you can go ahead and test your microphones and test your cameras to make sure it's all working for you so that we can work together on our projects. We've got about three more minutes for girls to sign on in. I see Helena Hel is so Brownie is you do you pronounce your name Helena or Helena? Um Helena, Helen or Helena. It's Helena. <laughs> I like that's all mine. That's I can it's fine with me. Okay, so, you know, I don't know if anybody here has lived in China, but I do have a friend that um, started learning Chinese calligraphy, and he loved it so much, he ended up moving to China. So, we're not going to go into Chinese calligraphy tonight. That's way above my skill level, but I do have some pictures of that to show you. So, yes, we do want to keep your, you know, your home areas private. You can say, you know, what state you live in, but um, we don't want to put out too much personal information out there. Um, so, again, those of you who have arrived a little late, change your name so we don't have any last name showing. And put on the level so we know what level you are. And we're just about ready to get started. So in the chat box, if I have any volunteers for the Girl Scout Law and the Girl Scout Promise, put your name in there. Or put in the words promise or law and we'll take the first person that gets in the chat box to say the promise and law for us. Okay, I see we have a volunteer for the law. Anybody want to do the promise for us? Oh, Amelia grabbed the promise. Excellent. Okay, so it is 6 o'clock, and I want to be respectful of your time because you all saw, uh, got here early, and I'm letting two more people into the from the waiting room. So if you've just come in, make sure you change your name. So we're not seeing your first name or last name, just uh, your n first name and the level you are. And we're going to go ahead and get started with our Girl Scout Promise and Law. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to get those out of the way. Okay, so Amelia, we want to go ahead and unmute yourself and start with the Girl Scout promise. Everyone make your Girl Scout sign. Yes. Uh, it's Amalia. Oh, Amalia. Okay, you know what? Actually, I skipped a step. Let me go ahead and introduce myself. So I want to thank all of you girls for joining us here today at Girl Scouts of Central California South for our calligraphy class. My name is Miss Mary, and I'm joined tonight with my coworker, Miss Natasha. 
and my camp name is Pyro and her camp name is Craft, so you can call us either one of those things. And tonight we're going to work on calligraphy. Um, it's something that is an art form that you may decide that you like and you want to pursue. Um, it's definitely not something you can learn in one evening, so tonight is just an introduction and if you like it, um, it would bring you a lifetime of joy to have really pretty handwriting for special projects. So let's go ahead and get started with um, the Girl Scout promise. Make your Girl Scout signs. Go ahead, Anna. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. Excellent. All right, let me move my controls up here so you can see down here. Helena, you want to go ahead and do our Girl Scout law? Yeah. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, consider and care, and be responsible for what I say and do, and respect myself and others. Going, you're fine. Use resources wisely. Make the world a better place. And be a sister to every Girl Scout. It sounds like maybe you're getting some repeat back. Do you have two um, pieces of technology going so that it's repeating on you? I think she had, I think what's going on is someone else is uh, being unmuted at the same time and repeating it. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to mute. <laughs> awesome. So let's go ahead. And like I said, thank you all for joining us. I see a few of you that have joined late, didn't get the message. Go ahead and go in there and change your first name and last name so that you have you maintain your own privacy. Rename yourself so that we have what level you are and then your name. Sophia, do you have a question? Um, what things will we need for um, the, the class? The best, the thing that will be best for the class tonight um, is you could use plain writing paper that has lines on it like this. And I'm going to go over all these papers in a little bit. Or you can use graph paper that has squares. Or you can get this special um, calligraphy practice paper that has squares, but they're kind of slanty squares. Okay. And then the best pens that we're going to be working with tonight will be, um, I just had it, here it is. You want to be using a pen or marker. Can you see the end of my pen right here? How it's straight on top. Um, you want to have a marker or a pen or um, something to write with that has a straight edge like this. If you are using a calligraphy pen that has a very pointed tip like this one, see how it comes to a real sharp point, um, it will be a little harder for you to get the strokes or the idea of how um, holding your pen will make the calligraphy wide strokes and skinny strokes because then you have to learn to use pressure to do the um, the calligraphy but with the straight edge pen you just learn the very basic strokes so if you can learn those well, first work. and then go on to learning the pressure that will help now the brush pens i um, got information from one of the leaders that they're their scouts have brush pens tonight. I did buy myself some brush pens so that I can try that along with you. Um, again, that's a different skill set and I'm going to go over those when we go through the tools. So if you have brush pens, that's okay. 
um, you'll just have to use your own pens a little bit differently than how I'm explaining the class. And I'll try to explain the class both ways. Um, how do I say your name? Arij? Arij, yeah, you got it right. Arij, um, awesome. Uh, what if you're using these types? Like, you can yes, the nibs. Off. Now, do you have, is it flat on the top or does it come to a, a rounded point? No, it's flat on the top, but yeah, it's those kind are of perfect. looser. Like it comes apart, like when you press down. Yes. The top will kind of come apart. So that's okay? That's that's perfectly fine. Um, the way we're going to use our pen tonight, we're not going to go too much into how pressure affects our pen. We'll discuss it a little bit. Um, but the flat topped pens are perfect. I mean, I should go over to my school supplies. Even like a highlighter marker that's flat on the top is will help you learn the basic stool, tools that um, or strokes that we're going to work on tonight. So let's take one more question before we get going. Haley, do you have something to ask? Um, we can only see your shoulder and your other camera. Oh, okay, I will fix that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. So, I have a request, and it's from our our boss, our manager. <laughs> <laughs> sure, girls, if you can go ahead. This is how we're gonna take attendance of who actually showed up to this workshop. If you can go ahead and just put your first name in the chat box, we would really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. And make that the first name of however uh, you signed up for your tickets through Eventbrite. So that way we can match them up. Is that how we're doing it, Natasha? We can go by the girl's name because I got that information too. Excellent. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and sh we'll get started here. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. And... Okay, so Natasha, I'm going to go ahead and hide my floating meeting controls again, but last time it made it difficult for me to get those tools back, so you'll have to help me out when I need to cancel my screen share. <laughs> All right, so for calligraphy, what is calligraphy? The basic definition of calligraphy is decorative handwriting or handwritten lettering made with a pen or brush. So for the history of calligraphy, calligraphy dates back um, to at least 200 BC in China. Along with China, Japan, India, U Europe, and Korea have deep roots in calligraphy from, his from a historical perspective. Calligraphy is considered not just as beautiful handwriting, but it is a major art in religions like the Middle East and East Asia. The European iteration of the art first appeared in Latin script around 600 BCE in Rome. That's in Italy. In Europe, towards the middle of the 15th century, printing was introduced. And it marked a distinction between normal handwritten letters or handwriting and ornate forms of lettering. So printing would be, you know, the kind of lettering you learn in kindergarten, how to write your ABCs. So before that, not very many people knew how to write unless they were really educated, and those people learned how to write in fancy lettering usually. But in the 15th century, more and more people were getting educated, and that's when a simpler form of writing called printing came into form. So the word calligraphy found its way into many European languages in the 16th century and the English word calligraphy appeared in the early 17th century. With the advent of the printing press, which allowed them to make books and mass produce words, calligraphy was then less in demand. So before the printing press, if you wanted to have a book, one person had to sit at a table and hand write that whole book and they had to perfectly or they had to tear out that page and start all over because they didn't have erasers back then for ink. Oh yeah, and this thing is getting recorded. 
I'm sorry, did you have a question? Otherwise, could you please put your microphone on mute? I'd appreciate that. Thank you. She was talking to a parent. Okay, awesome. All right, so um, with today's modern technology, it seems that calligraphy has found a special place in the heart of, make, of makers or crafters. Although it's often imitated through digital fonts with your computer, those who enjoy writing things by hand know how special and personal the practice is, and it's something that anyone can begin with just a few tools. So in calligraphy, there are um, three, three major styles of calligraphy. Um, so first we're going to talk about forms. So there are three major styles of calligraphy, namely Western, Arabic, and Eastern. So Western calligraphy is influenced by the Greek and Latin alphabets. During 3000 BC, Romans used reed and quill pens to write on papyrus. Reed is like, it's just like a stick that you pull out of these plants that grow along the river. And they're very thick, um, reeds kind of like um if you had seen oh shoot cattails if you've ever seen cattails the insides of the the those reeds kind of look the same and what it does is the holes in those plants pull the ink up into the pen and quills would be feathers they would cut up feathers the tips of feathers to make quills and the papyrus was also made out of those reedy plants and so that lettering made its way into biblical text and various other manuscripts. And in the 19th century, calligraphy witnessed a revival with the beginning of calligraphy teaching courses in London. Um, brushes, ball, flat ball, and round nib pens are used in Western calligraphy. And I'm going to show you some of my nibs and my pen tips a little bit later. A typical example of Western calligraphy is a biblical manuscript. And I've got some pictures of the examples after I describe them. So in Eastern calligraphy, this was greatly influenced by Chinese calligraphy. The East Asian cultures boast a rich and complex history of calligraphy. And in the East, the tools for calligraphy are known as the four treasures of the study. And the four treasures are brushes, ink, paper, and ink stone. Each one of those four things has a difference in how their art's going to turn out. So in Eastern calligraphy, they use a wide variety of brushes, inks, and papers. They could use palm leaves or clay or even barks off of trees can be used as surfaces for calligraphy. And then we have Arabic calligraphy. So compared to other forms of calligraphy, Arabic calligraphy or, is a, or Islamic calligraphy is different. This form of calligraphy is closely associated with religion and Islamic geometry art. In a way, it is a visual representation of the art of the spiritual world. And calligraphy is a beautiful art which can be learned. It's easy if you really want to learn it. Calligraphy as an art is relatively easy to learn, like I said, but it's difficult to master. It takes years of practice to master the art, learning all the techniques. So if you're interested in learning this art, then now's a good time to start. And you can find all kinds of online calligraphy classes for free or even for paid classes that are available to any of you who are aspiring to learn this art form. So what is the difference between cursive and calligraphy? Some of you may have come here tonight thinking, oh, I'm going to learn how to write cursive because cursive and calligraphy are the same thing. Well, I hate to burst your bubble because they're different. Now, you can write calligraphy in cursive, but cursive doesn't necessarily mean it's automatically calligraphy. Remember, we said calligraphy is making your letters beautiful. So the main difference, like I said, is calligraphy is art, but the type of script can vary greatly. And we're going to go over types of script in a little bit. 
So cursive, on the other hand, is a style of writing in which the letters are joined together and every word is written in one go without taking the pen off the paper. Calligraphy can be in cursive, but it doesn't have to be. So in most English speaking countries, the cursive style of writing is the most dominant kind. That's because the English cursive, the first cursive font that has been established during the colonial times because it was fast to write. And most cursive scripts can be written quite fast compared to other calligraphy scripts. But fast doesn't mean easy. On the contrary, most cursive scripts can be actually quite hard to write. So there was even one form of cursive that my mother as a one-room schoolhouse teacher uh, taught me when I was a little girl called the Palmer Method. And it was developed using the large muscles of the arm. So basically you kept your arm very still, just like your whole arm was in a cast, and you used your whole shoulder and your whole arm to write all your letters. So it was developed because about the same time the typewriter came out and you can imagine how much faster you can type on your computer or type on a typewriter than you can do with just a pen and paper. Well, this Palmer method was so fast that they could even keep up with a typewriter. But it kind of fell out of fashion by the 1950s and is only being kept alive today by artists and enthusiasts. So I like the method of learning cursive as it focuses on practicing strokes just like calligraphy does. So um, this is an example of the European calligraphy. This is like, can anybody guess what letter this is? Let me try to move my form out of the way. There you can see the top. Can Sorry, my it? black bars are in the ray. Did anybody guess yet, Miss Natasha? A lot of them are P and some said Q. Actually, I believe it's a P, like Paul, because see the purple's just mostly up here. And then this is a whole nother decorative thing going on, but I'm fairly certain this is a, a P. So that shows you an example of calligraphy. They just take those letters and they completely turn it into art. Here's another example of um, European calligraphy. You can see where this, they, their letters are all kind of the same, but every once in a while they'll throw in a fancy letter. Like this one up there looks like it's a, an O, like O-N-A-N-D. And then there's a fancy G that starts a word. And then you can see on this one, all these words, I believe that's Greek. I don't know how to read Greek, but it kind of sort of looks like Greek to me. <laughs> but you see how they turn this H into a very fancy H. And here, this is actually, who can guess what letter this is? Anybody have a guess? R, D... D, that's correct. D, one of the hints that sometimes if you can't guess what it is, you want to look at these letters to the right. And this is in Latin and domina, dom, domica or domica or donomica. Those are, um, domina is one of the words you'll find in the Bible a lot. So I knew for certain that was a D because that's domina. Um, so then you go on to our Eastern calligraphy. And you here you can see how they're writing with their brush. Here you can see they've used their stamps with these little squares here in the corner. And this is called an ink stone. And what they do is their ink actually comes in these little, it almost like looks like melting wax and you scrape it into your stone until it scrapes off like powder, like you're grating cheese. And then they put water in this little trough right here and they mix up their ink every time they're going to make their calligraphy. They make ink from powder. And then here we come to the um, Arabic or Islamic calligraphy. And this is one you can see here that sometimes they decorate the outside of their buildings even, or like this is a, a picture they've hung on the wall. And this is one of their books. And you can see how they incorporate gold, like real gold, into their pages of their art. And here's another sign that's on a wall someplace. It's a plaque. 
So those are some examples. So what we're going to get started on today is we are going to quickly review our tools that we're going to use. So I'm going to spotlight my table here. I'm going to move my paper out of the way. So the first thing you're going to use um, in calligraphy, of course, is your pens. So these are some of my Schaefer pens that I have. They're different widths. All of these are my Schaefer pens. And these Schaefer pens come with these different nibs that you can change out your pens with. You just take them like this. This one you can kind of see through so you can see if the ink is getting full or getting empty. And you twist off the top. And then here's my nib. So if I wanted to change, you can see how, let me move, find my camera, there it is. So you can see how one of these is um, a tiny bit wider than the other one. So if I wanted to change the widths of my letters, what I would do is I would unscrew my nib like this. And then I could take out my ink. Now what I would want to do if I'm changing this, then I want to wash this. I want to get all that ink out that's in there because I don't want that ink to dry inside. It could ruin my pen. And then you just put that ink cartridge right into the next one and put it right back into your pen. But I'm going to put this one back together because I'm going to use this pen for our class. So that's how the nibs work. That's how the cartridges work. Now the cartridges can come in many different colors. Um, you can get black, you can get blue, you can even get orange, and red, and even you can get yellow. And yellow in the cartridge almost looks like it's red, so sometimes it's hard to tell. But these are what the little ink cartridges look like, and those go inside your pens. So most of these pens all work the same way. This is a different kind of pen right here. Um, this pen works a little differently. Um, the nibs like this, you can see on the bottom side, you can see that it's got plastic. And on the top, it's metal. And it has that line right through the middle, if you can see that line. And that's how the ink gets down to the tip of your pen is right through that line. And like one of our um, attendees here tonight mentioned, if you push on this pen, that line sort of separates just a little bit and makes your, um, let me see if I can get it to do it on my thumb. Yeah, you can sort of see it. Can you see that how, let me see. It's hard to see on this. Well, I can't get the thing to focus. But this pen is different because instead of having plastic on one side, it's metal on both sides. And I, they give you this little piece of plastic that you use to clean out the inside of your pen. And this kind of shows you that the way this pen works, I can get this to go in the middle. You can see that that plastic gets pinched right between. So there's two big pieces of metal on each side of this one. So the ink goes down through the whole thing of these metals instead of down that little stripe of, of space in between the nib on this one. So some of these pens function a little differently, but the basic strokes that you learn to write in calligraphy are the same when you're um, using those edges. And then, uh, like someone had said, they have brush pens. Now, uh, brush pens um, function where your ink, if you write on it very lightly, is skinny. But if you push on it and put tension on it, then it's thick. So the way you control your lettering with a pen, you could start out writing and then push hard and then pick up and write very lightly and then push hard and then write very lightly and push hard and write very lightly. 
Um, so it all depends on how hard you push with your pen as to how thick or thin your letters are. So that's my name. I don't do very good because I haven't practiced very much with the brush pens on how hard to push or how not hard to push. But the reason we're doing the straight edge in this class today is I don't have to worry about how hard to push. All I have to worry about is what angle I'm holding my pen and it automatically makes those skinny and fat lines for me. Hey, one of the girls, hey, chisel tips. Chisel tip markers are okay. Yes, chisel tip markers are much more like these that I'm using right now. As long as you have a flat edge, that's what you're going to want to look for. Is just use the flat edge of that chisel the same angle that I'm using this pen. So, to go again, um, to back up again and go over some more tools, here's some other fun things. Once you get into the art, um, you can go ahead and get, um, I'm using my flashlight because it's as black and it doesn't come up. Is it easier to see with the flashlight or not with the flashlight? Uh, go over again. Easier to see with the flashlight. Okay. So this is a set of calligraphy pens I have. And this one has an offset, this funny little thing here. So that way, if I want to write with this, and I can show you how I'm writing with this a little later, it changes the angle of your pen so you don't have to crank your wrist around or turn your paper so much. And then these are called nibs. These are different than the ones I showed you that switch out in the pens. And I dropped it on the floor, so... Let me try to pick that up. And these go into these things. These are like um, the pens that hold your nib. And what you do with those is you take this nib and you slip it inside your pen like that. And some people, if their fingers aren't tough, they'll use um, like a pliers or something to push that in. But I've got tough fingers, so I just use my fingers to shove that in. And then what you're going to use are these little ink pots. And you actually dip your ink right into those uh, pots of ink. Dip your pen into the ink to paint your letters. Um, I have a... a, a Pot of, a little pot of ink already opened. I covered it in plastic so it wouldn't dry out while I was waiting for the class. But to show you how that works, you just take this and you dip it in there. Now I haven't burnished my nibs. They say when you use a new nib, you're supposed to um, light a match over it to kind of burn off some of the um, some of the covering. Oh, this is a perfect pen. Can you see how that pen opens up? Let me pull it up. This one is a perfect example of what that one Girl Scout was talking about. See how that pen really opens up when I push on it? And when I let go, it comes to a point. And when I push on it, it opens. So what's going to happen is my ink, when I go skinny, it's going to stay together. And when I go apart, if I have enough ink, that whole area in between the two sides should um, stay full of ink. So I think I've got enough ink on my pen now. Yeah, see how that filled, filled in? But my ink didn't last very long because I drew too slow. Let me try dipping it one more time. So again, this is when you get a pen and a nib that's flexible and you learn about putting it, um, yeah. It takes a little practice to get that down. That's why I like using the cartridge pens. Plus, you do, your hands don't end up looking like this. And then the last pen I'm going to share with you is actually my favorite pen because 
it's not necessarily great for calligraphy. It's better for just plain old cursive writing. But I love it because this pen is made out of glass. And you can see all these swirlies at the end of the pen. And that's what holds the ink, those levels of swirlies. So you just dip your pen in the ink and all that ink holds into there. And now I can write a very long time. I'm just going to go ahead and write cursive here to just show you how, um, oops, I put another G instead of a J. J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, I'm getting sloppy in my writing here, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Okay, now the thing about ink writing, you have to sit and wait for that to dry because if you close your page and you open that back up, you can see it's going to um, not be dry yet. So that's why in old time movies you see them writing and then they'll take like a what looks like a can of baby powder and they'll shake it over their paper. That's what that's about. They're, they're shaking that over their paper to dry up that ink so it doesn't get all over the place. So I'm going to wrap this back up. That was just to share with you um, one of my tools that I like to use. So if you ha get to the point where you have fun writing and you want a really pretty pen to write with, you can order those through Amazon for like 10 bucks. But again, your fingers are going to get covered in ink. It's just what happens. I don't know if when you paint or do other crafts that your fingers get all covered, but mine sure do. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our paper. So we've got some practice paper here that I told you it's kind of like the, um, the graph paper. And um, it has tiny spaces and then long spaces. And it's at an angle. It's not straight up and down like this regular graph paper here. And I'm sorry, I forgot to show you one more thing. I showed you those little um, ink cartridges here. They also give you these ink cartridges that you can use that go up and down. And so I could take this ink cartridge and dip it inside. Whoops, almost spilled my ink here. I could dip it inside here, and I could twist this up, and it would suck all that ink into this cartridge. And then I could put that in my pen. So I could choose whatever ink color I wanted and put in this one and change out my inks. But then you have to wash it and make sure it stays clean. So anyways, so you've got your practice paper or you could use plain, light, plain writing paper or your graph paper. And then in the supply list, somebody had asked about the polished paper I talked about in the supply list. So I know all of you have seen one of these. This is our Girl Scout cookie order form. I don't know if this was from last year or two years ago. But if you ever get professionally printed paper and you can see how it has that shininess to it, and you could take your calligraphy pen and you can see how that feels when you write on the shiny paper versus when you write on like plain school writing paper or graph paper or even when you write on um, fine paper such as linen paper or something each one feels a little different in how you write and it may go faster it may feel more scratchy different papers will feel different when you write so that was the only reason I had mentioned getting polished paper. And again, I don't know if you can see, it takes a long time for the ink to dry when you're writing on polished paper. So that's the other thing about that fancy print paper that the printers use. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share again with you the screen that shows the different strokes that are the basic forms for calligraphy. So the thing you're going to learn to do is everybody's going to take their pen and there's no lines on this paper but basically what you want to do is start at the top. Just a minute, let me change my annotation thing so it's... Um, I don't see... No, I can't change. Okay, so 
the top of these strokes you want to be on one line and the bottom of these strokes you want to be two or three lines lower. I'm going to talk to you about the size of your strokes in a little while, but just to learn the basic strokes, this is called um, like a, a half curve or a half round in different um, calligraphy forms. They'll call it different things, but basically it's like a C. But it's not a C that's straight up and down sideways a C. You could tell it's like at a 45 degree angle. So you're going to want to make a C and then you're going to want to make a C that way. And then the other strokes you're going to make is straight down, straight across, to the left at a 45 degree angle, to the right at a 45 degree angle, and so those are the six strokes. Curving to the left, curving to the right, straight up and down, straight side to side, 45 to the left, and 45 to the right. And then this is a whole like practice page. So you can, I just found this online, I just Googled practicing uh, calligraphy strokes, and this is just one of the pictures that there's tons of them you can find online and these are like drills like if any of you have ever learned to play the piano how you have certain drills that you have to practice over and over again to get your fingers used to hitting those notes um, these are calligraphy drills it gets your hand and your arm used to um, making these strokes so one other thing I want to show you now that they're getting ready to start writing. This is a book that I really like. I saw it at Hobby Lobby and it was like over $20 and to me that's too much money. And then I went on Amazon and I found it used for like eight bucks. So if you can find it used someplace, it's a really um, comprehensive book. It has, if you notice, it has all kinds of alphabets in here and it shows you the lines of how to draw those alphabets and the alphabets we're going to concentrate on are the ones at the very front of the book but what i was wanting to get to was to show you how that you're supposed to hold your pen and i should have marked that page Okay. All right. Well, I can't find the picture, so I'll just show you. So the way that you're, that when you hold your paper, and I'm going to just use the plain cardboard side so you can see easiest. Um, the only thing that's going to touch the table, like the, if this was um, the table surface, um, let's see if I can get my camera down to kind of show you. The only thing that's going to touch the surface of my table or my paper, um, it's going to touch in three points. The pen is going to touch the surface. My pinky is going to touch the surface. And the ball of my hand is going to touch the surface. So these three points will be the only points that are touching your paper. Can you see that? The ball of my hand, the pinky here, and the pen, point of my pen. So that's how you're holding it there. And then when you're holding your pen, you want to, this is the most comfortable grip right here with your middle finger under, and then your pointer finger and your thumb pinching it like that, and then supporting supported by your middle finger there. And so then that helps your pen get to be at this 45 degree angle to the paper. Um, now part of calligraphy is how your pen is at the paper. If it's straight up and down, your pen's not going to write. If it's way down flat, your pen's not going to write. You want your pen to be at a 30 degree angle for some calligraphies or up here at a 40, more of a 45 degree angle for other calligraphies and maybe even high for some, but most of them come in at around 30 or 35 degrees. So, which is close to 45, it's a little bit closer to the paper. So that's something you wanna think about. 
The next thing you want to think about, I don't know if your teachers, when you learn to write your alphabet, let me clear away some of these pages so I can make my workspace look less cluttered here. Okay, so when you first learned to write, now if your teacher let you learn to write with your paper straight side to side like this to write your letters, I'm going to pull my camera up so you can see a little easier. I don't know if you can see how my wrist is really turned sideways, and that's going to make my hand hurt. So most teachers will tell you to turn your page the same direction that your arm is. So if I'm right-handed, I'm going to turn my page this way. So now I can write, and my wrist is more straight and that's going to be more comfortable for me to write. Now if I'm a lefty, I'm going to want to turn my page to the left so that I don't have to crank my hand around. I don't know if you've seen some left hand writers, they'll twist their hand around or they'll turn their hand around this way and there's all kinds of funny directions that they teach themselves to write in. Now if you look at that calligraphy bible, there's a whole couple of pages about how to write left-handed. They even make special pens for how to write left-handed. But if most of you, let's see, put in the chat box, how many of you out there need to learn how to write lefties? And while Natasha's reading that for me, I'm just going to go ahead with my practice paper. Now the next thing I'm going to go, um, well, I'm going to go ahead on my practice paper and I'm going to show you those six strokes. So let me bring my camera down. So remember the first one. Now again, I've got my pen up from my paper at about 35, 30, 35 degree angle. My pinky is touching, my pen's touching, the bottom of my hand is touching. And so straight up and down on your pet paper. Okay, my ink dried out on this one. There we go. Sometimes you got to prime your pen a little bit to get it to work. This one doesn't want to work. Let me go pull out another one. There we go. This one's even in yellow ink. So you want to have your ink nib at that angle. So this is straight up and down 90 degrees. That's straight horizontally at zero degrees, you want your pen nib to be at 45 degrees. So the flat part of your pen is going to be this way. The whole pen itself is going to be crisscrossed of that, right? So your, your pen is going to want to be at 45 degrees. And if you hold it at that degree, that pen nib's a little too small. Let me see if I can get this one to, to write again. I think what happened is my ink came loose. No, that's good. Well, this is actually something I could show you. Some of these ink pens, they the ink goes in it, but you have to put an empty one in the bottom of your pen, and it helps hold that one in place. That's why you can hear it rattling a little bit. Um, so, again, their first six strokes, you're going to start at your 45 degree angle. Oh, come on, pen. This is one of the struggles. I don't know if you can see this, but the ink in that line is kind of dried up. And what you can do is get a wet paper towel, or sometimes, if I'm at home, I'll just lick my finger and wipe on it until you can see that ink starts coming through again. And, uh, or I'll draw my pen upside down, or I'll kind of bang it on the table a little bit. Um, what that happens is, you know, your ink pen has dried out and I've got a couple of fans going in this room and so this ink pen has dried out now because it didn't like me laying it down without this lid on it. Let me pull out this other pen. This is part of the thing about calligraphy is you have to learn which pens like working in which directions and which pens don't which pens are more finicky, 
and so that pen's being finicky today. That's why when you find somebody who's into calligraphy, they'll have like a favorite pen. And if you touch their favorite pen, they have a fit because they don't want anybody to move their favorite pen or lose their favorite pen. So what you're doing, what happens since I'm holding my uh, straight edge at 45 degrees, um, when I move this way, it makes very skinny lines. So the curve is actually one of the harder strokes to start with. So we're going to go ahead and start. Let's start a new line. You're going to start right here and you're going to go straight up and down. Straight up and down. Straight up and down. And what you're going to want to do is try to make all of those strokes. Try not to let your wrist bend like that. Um, you want to try to make all of those strokes as perfect as possible. Um, you see this one, the corner of my, of my pen came up and it wasn't straight at the top. And this one got a little bit long. Um, that one's pretty good, but it's a little bit short. That one was the best one. This one went a little sideways. So part of becoming good at calligraphy is taking the time to do your practice drills. And it looks a little boring, and it is tedious, I promise you. It's even tedious to me. And even though I've done some calligraphy writing, if I haven't done calligraphy writing in a few weeks or a few months, I'll sit here and I'll practice my drills until my muscles remember how to do that. Now, you notice sometimes I was wiggling my fingers like that to make my strokes. You don't want to do that. What you're wanting to do is this, you're going to pretend your hand's a block of wood. And you're going to pull that hand back with your elbow. The whole hand is getting pulled back from your shoulder with your elbow. You don't want your fingers scrunching up to make those letter strokes. So you stroke straight, 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 straight. Now you're going to go, and you're not going to turn the angle of your pen. You, um, I did turn the angle of my pen, actually, when I was showing you those. Now what you want to do is get your angle of your pen at the 45 degrees, and now when you go straight, you can see how it has that pretty pointed top and pretty pointed bottom. Now you're not going to pull it straight that way. You're going to pull it straight up and down with the paper. So I've got it at 45 degrees, so I'm pulling it straight up and down with the paper. So my elbow is kind of... I'm not going straight back with my elbow. My elbow's kind of going sort of a little bit to my body. It depends on what angle you've got your paper at. But you get it to a point that feels comfortable for you, and you do the straights. And you can see those are kind of thick. Now, I'm not going to change the angle of my pen. I'm still going to keep it at that 45 degrees. And now I'm going to go sideways. And you can see that those are a tiny bit skinnier than the straight up and downs. Now the reason we have to practice the strokes is all six of these strokes make up all the letters of our alphabet. Every single letter of the alphabet you can make with these strokes. Now you see that one turned out a little skinny because I didn't have I let my fingers got lazy and they started rotating. You want to make sure your fingers stay still. So even though you're an old lady like me and you've done this for a long time, I haven't picked up my calligraphy pens in a, in a few weeks. Um, well, actually several weeks. But I pulled them out a couple of weeks ago when I knew I was going to take, teach this class. And I spent probably, I don't know, like, three or four hours actually doing some of these drills and practicing to try to get some continuity in my strokes. So if your strokes don't look this even, don't feel bad. It takes practice. Just remember back when you were in kindergarten how hard it was to like learn to write your ABCs. It's the same sort of thing. You're learning a new skill. So the next stroke we're going to go to is the 45 degree left hand slant. And you want to make, and if you do these properly, it's going to look super skinny. Now, you don't want to be pushing too hard on your paper. You want to just let that pen glide nice and soft. If you do it too soft, it's going to not, 
you'll see it'll like break the flow of your ink. You want to make sure it keeps contact with the paper, but you're not going to push really hard like that. Because see how it made a glomp and a glomp? You don't want that. You want it to be nice and light. Now I'm going to do 45 degrees to the other direction. And now you can see exactly why using this flat tip makes your letters look so different when you're using a flat edge because the difference between the left and the right are very dramatic. So now we practice our vertical, we practice our horizontal, our left slant, our right slant. Now we're going to go back to these C's. Um, I call them C's because that's what most kids think they look like. Some calligraphers call them half moons. It sort of looks like half of a moon. So you're going to start those moons out like you're doing a 45 degree slant here. But when you get to the middle, then you start going down just like this stroke here. And then you're going to swoop back up like you're swooping to the left. But instead of coming down, you're going to go up just a tiny bit. The thing with calligraphy, you almost never take your pen up. You're almost always dragging your pen down when you make your letters. So the C is one of the things you, you kind of just come to a point where it starts to go up and then you lift. So you start at the top, you come around, and right when it starts to go back up to the top, you lift it off, off the page. This is the thing that makes calligraphy different than cursive, is you put your pen down, you make your stroke, you lift your pen up. You put your pen down, you make your stroke, you bring your pen up. Now let's try it the other way. We're going to start here. We're going to swoop from the top and bring it down. Swoop from the top and bring it down. And you can see mine are not very regular or not very consistent because I haven't put in that practice. It's been a while since I've been working on this. So the thing that you have to remember, don't let your wrists spin like this. Don't let your fingers do the work. Put your pen point, your pinky point, and your ball of your hand on the paper and drag that hand around with your shoulder. And then you're going to get much more consistent. Okay, so those are the six six uh, basic strokes and oh my goodness I spent too much time talking about the basics again so now what we're going to go into is how to do the alphabet now I showed you that the alphabet is done from all of those six strokes so what we're going to work on today is Roman capitals now you can find alphabets like this anywhere on the internet and you can see just like those pictures that your teacher may have showed you when you learned to print in school that they have the arrows where each part of your letter goes now you can see that a starts here it goes down here but then it makes a cute little sideways to give it that pretty little foot and then it comes up here and goes down for number three and it makes a cute little sideways with number four to make that pretty little foot and then five is straight across so we're going to practice this alphabet and I'll show you how those six strokes make exactly um, those things um, one last thing I need to show you about practicing when you're talking about your capital letters versus your small letters your capital letters, when you make your sideways strokes like this, your capital letters are normally um, five strokes high. And then for your, actually, let me pull up the page. I had it right here. Okay. So squares you put them on top of each other you can make them look like a zipper or you can make them look like a staircase and then most of the thicks and thins you want to have um, your rules each of these alphabets will have the little staircase here 
So for this alphabet, you want your letters to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight squares high. So then you take your pen. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I know I'm going to go from this line to about that line to make my letters. So now I'm going to try the A. So I've got my pen at my 45 degree angle. I've got my paper the same way that my arm is. And you can see that this paper has the slanty lines. It's going to help me get my slants going. So I'm going to start up here with the A and I'm going to go sideways. And then I'm going to give it a little foot. Now I'm going to take my swoop down here. It's going to be a little skinnier because I'm going in the left direction. And now I'm going to give that a little foot. And then I'm going to come up here in the middle and I'm going to go sideways like that. So I'm going to try that one more time. Down and a foot. Oh, my arm moved too much. I made that foot too big. Well, I wear size 10 tennis shoes, so my feet are too big anyway. So as you see, it takes practice. The more you practice, the better you get at making your calligraphy letters nice and smooth and perfect. As you may guess, I write my name a whole lot more than I write anything else when I'm writing calligraphy. So I can do M's and then small A's, R's, and Y's pretty good, but I don't always write my name in capital. So there's my A's. By the time I got to my fourth A, it's looking pretty a lot better. Then you're going to go for your B's. So your B's, the first thing you're going to do, in some of these letters, it has you make something called a serif. And a serif, you're going to take your 45 and you're going to go up and then you're going to go down. And then you're going to make a second stroke and you're going to go right on top the same thing. You're going to go down and then you're going to make like one of those C's. And see how that kept my point up top but it filled in the thing, filled in the bottom? And you'll notice my paper is bleeding. So this paper doesn't like this marker. This marker puts out way too much ink for this paper. Let me try changing to this paper, see if it'll like it better. So again, to make the serif, you're going to go up and down. And then the other way, you're going to go down and make the little C. And that fills in that top corner because there's really no way to make that top corner with that pointy bit. So if you want to have your letters to go up and then have that pretty swoop, it's actually two strokes. So um, let's go ahead and do the B. So this B, you're going to go over a little bit and down. And then... Mary, you're at 7 o'clock. I'm at 7 o'clock. Okay, so what I would recommend is go ahead and practice those strokes, and each one of those strokes will help you write the alphabet. Those strokes are really, really important. Um, and with the uh, pressure pens, the same thing applies. You just take your pen, and when you know you need a wide stroke, you make it wide. When you know you want a skinny stroke, you put a little bit of pressure. And these were a little wider, a little wider, a little wider. So those of you with the pressure pens, that's how you can make your strokes skinny and make them wide. So that's basically the skills you need to start learning calligraphy is figuring out when you want your <laughs> Max, hush, I apologize, I've got puppies. <laughs> so you want to figure out when you want your strokes to be skinny and when you want your strokes to be fat. And using that 45 degrees and using a straight edge pen will help you learn that. Um, like I said, calligraphy is not really something you can learn in an hour, but you can definitely learn those six basic strokes, and that will get you a really good start. And then all you have to do then 
is get your chart out and follow each one of these alphabets, no matter what alphabet I wanted to do. I could do any one of these alphabets, and each one of them, see even that one has super fancy strokes, but they're all almost basically, see there's a half moon right there, there's another half of a half moon, um, that's a straight up and down, but it kind of swoops a little bit. There's our 45 degree angle. So can you even show, the fancy ones can just be can, a bunch of strokes. Can you show the cover of the book the girls are asking? Sure. This is called the Calligrapher's Bible. Now you don't need something this comprehensive. If you get yourself a calligraphy starter kit like this, this starter kit came with a practice pad of paper and it came with a book. Oh, I thought I had it just here. I'm sorry, I don't know what I did with the book. But the book is about the same size, and it has alphabets in it. Um, this practice kit that had the nibs in it, that one came with this textbook. And it has a whole bunch of different alphabets in it of how to write. Um, but, yeah, the Calligrapher's Bible has a whole bunch of history. It has a whole bunch of stuff on the tools. It has a whole lot more detail. So if you get one of these practice kits and you go through the little tiny book and you like what it says and you want to explore more, this Calligrapher's Bible is a really comprehensive book and you'll really learn a lot of detail out of this. But there's some really great site websites that you can find online. Um, that I found when I was ready for this class. If you go to our council YouTube channel, to Girl Scouts of Central California South YouTube channel, I have made a playlist for you there for our calligraphy class. And there is a really good series of videos by this lady. I forget the name of her site, but it's something like crafty something. And she does, she's got some of the videos there. And then there's another calligrapher I have, and his video is all just music. But if you check out his YouTube channel, you can tell he must be from the Arabic style of um, calligraphy, because as he writes some more, you can see that he's doing the, the European type of calligraphy, but you can see some of his pretty artwork. You can tell he's got a lot more skills than that. Um, so check out that YouTube playlist and it will give you a lot more information and you can find all kinds of drills you can find all kinds of free printable forms and practice papers online there's lots of things that you know if you choose to pay for things there's lots of things out there you can buy but there's lots and lots of free things you can find to print off the internet also so let's take a question or two and then we'll do make new friends Any questions? I don't see anything. Okay. Well, let's cross our hands right over left. Make new friends by keep the old. One is silver and the other's gold. The circle is round. It has no end. That's how wrong I want to be your friend. Apologize for my voice. I'm not a professional singer at all. Just a Girl Scout bomb. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, feel free to stay around a little bit later. I can answer your questions one-on-one. -on -one. And join us on Monday, if you like. We have a genealogy class that we're going to do. And maybe we'll practice some of our genealogy on our pretty fancy genealogy charts. Or I'm sorry, practice our calligraphy on our fancy genealogy charts. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. We'll see you all later. Bye. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming today. For the class on Monday, do you sign up or where do you go? Oh, you sign yes. up? Um, Oh, you know what? I do apologize. I was just looking today, and that class is sold out already, isn't it, Natasha? Yeah. It's sold okay. Out. For for those of you who did not get tickets, though, I am going to live stream that to our YouTube channel. So if you want to check out the live stream on YouTube, just go to our YouTube channel.
and you will see the, the playlist for genealogy and we'll be doing some of the uh, badge it works for the brownie mice family story badge in that class so especially if you're a brownie level go ahead and check it out it'll help you with some of your badge work and anybody else who wants to check out genealogy you can check out that youtube channel and follow along um, with our classes we're doing that okay thank you you're thank welcome you so much. have a good night you thank too you. thank you for joining us Hi. Any other questions? I went in cheese. Oh, it's okay. Just say bye. Let's... Bye. Bye, Helena. Nice to see you. No, it's or that one. Any other questions, anyone that's still hanging around? Go ahead, Eden, and unmute yourself and ask. Um, I learned calligraphy. I wanted to learn calligraphy from um, my great aunt because she always does calligraphy in all of um, my and my brother, me and my brother's birthday letters. Uh -huh. um, now, is it, is, does she do calligraphy or does she do cursive? Calligraphy. I have Pretty. a note her. Yeah, so cursive means your letters are all connected. The calligraphy is when the, you have like the skinnies and the wides and the fancy swirls. Yeah, that's that's her. so neat. You know what? That's very much like me. When I was your age, I had an older brother who's like 15 years older. And when he would send me letters or birthday cards, he would do it in calligraphy too. And that's what made me interested. So I'm so happy to see that you have an aunt that's sharing her love of calligraphy with you too. So that's a I very fun way to get interested. I always think her writing is so pretty because um, calligraphy is pretty. So. Yeah. so you found out tonight it actually takes a lot of work to make it oh, that yeah. pretty, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So I would highly recommend if you want to get good like your aunt, find some of those drills online. And you can start by just filling up whole lines of downstrokes and whole lines of side strokes and whole lines of angle strokes. But remember that page I showed you in the front where it showed like circle, circle, slash, slash, slide, side, and it had all different kinds of things all in the same yeah. line. Once you get comfortable with those six things, then I would recommend doing some of those drills where you're doing different strokes as you go along and that gets your arm and your hand ready and just remember you want to move make all your writing like this you see how I'm moving from my shoulder you don't want your writing to be from here you want your writing to be from there and that's how you're gonna get much better at calligraphy oh yeah you're not gonna learn how to do it perfectly in one night that's right. It's like learning to play the piano. You can't sit down at the piano and play, you know, Brahms lullaby. You start out with twinkle, twinkle, little star. So it's kind of the same. You've got to start with those little practice drills. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Anyone else have any questions? It doesn't look like it, so I'm going to go ahead and start closing people out. Yeah. yeah. I'll help you. There we go. Right. Yay. <sighs> Time just flies too much. You plan so much for one hour workshops. That's why. Well, it's like I own all I did was the tools and the paper and the six basic strokes. And it was like, oh my gosh, that's an hour. Yep. So maybe even, an hour and a half, maybe give like yourself 30 minutes of like just doing the basic stuff and the tools and then the rest of the time practice and questions for the girls. 
Yeah. Maybe that's what we need to start doing for the rest of our classes too, because um, especially the ones that are like in depth and we want to go over all the stuff with them. So maybe we need to email people and for Monday night about the genealogy and say, you know, we plan an hour, but Mary usually goes late. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I don't know, but yeah, it, it's like, it just seems to me like once at that hour point, it's like, I've finally gotten all the basics done and we can really take off and it's 